The walkaway phenomenon in this country has become rather prominent over the past year or so, with many people who used to be liberals or on the left expressing that they were leaving and they were either going to vote Trump or they were just leaving the left. The Democrats are completely fractured. Joe Biden's campaign is an unmitigated and unhinged disaster. He's hiding from reporters. He's hiding in the basement. And Chris Wallace of Fox News said it was the darndest thing. The Democrats aren't actually sending out anyone from the campaign to do any press out of the convention. And it's completely unprecedented. Kamala Harris is unliked. Joe Biden can't speak properly. And now the biggest nail in the coffin, a report from from Fox News, from Politico and other outlets that Barack Obama himself has been dragging Joe Biden as well. He's basically saying Biden is unfit for office. In fact, in one quote, he said, don't underestimate Joe's ability to F things up. Some people have pointed to Barack Obama's endorsement of Hillary Clinton, where he basically said Hillary's got it. And his endorsement of Joe Biden is basically he's going to bring in people to help him. We saw that tweet from CNN that said Kamala Harris is perfect for Biden if and when he decides to step aside. Biden's referred to himself as a, as a transition candidate. Some have reported. And I just got to tell you, it really feels like the Democrats, for one, have no unity, as evidenced by the former president ripping into his own vice president, but that the party's completely fractured. They have no goals for 2020. I don't even know what Joe Biden's policies are because he flip flops so often. He denies being in favor of defunding the police, but says yes, absolutely. When asked if you would support the core tenet of defunding the police, reallocating funding from police to somewhere else. And of course, we're seeing the unhinged conspiracies from the left, which I've talked about quite a bit. And we have developing information that Joe Biden himself goes around saying mail in voting is great. It's fine. While his own supporters are screaming that the mail in voting is being, you know, the, the post office is is being attacked. There's a conspiracy where people are stealing mailboxes. I'm sorry, I got to stop right here, man. The left has become inundated with infighting, unhinged fringe theories, and a lack of leadership. Obama, possibly the most prominent Democrat today, who is basically out of the limelight, won't even give real support to Biden behind the scenes. Okay, fine. He'll come out and he'll do his press events and he'll say, yeah, yeah, you know, Biden's great. Behind the scenes, we know the truth. These people are fighting with each other. Joe Biden's flip flopping on issues so rapidly. People are pointing out that under Obama, Obama was called the deporter in chief. Joe Biden was a part of that administration. And now Joe Biden's flip flop completely on border controls and deportation. No, I'm sorry. The Democrats seem to have nothing that makes sense. Under Donald Trump, he has policies. You can see what he wants to do, whether you agree with him or not. Yet for some reason, People seem to think Joe Biden is on track to win. I'm sorry, man. We just saw Kamala Harris on on Stephen Colbert's show. And he asked her, he said, you basically called out Biden with some pretty heavy, you know, hammers uh, talking about race, racial issues. And Kamala Harris just started laughing incessantly, gave no real answer. I'm sorry, man. When Obama comes out and says Joe Biden doesn't have it, I'm going to go ahead and say Obama's probably right. Not that I'm a big fan of the guy, but let's let's actually read what he has to say and see what's going on. Before we get started, head over to TimCast.com slash donate if you'd like to support my work. There's many ways you can give. I got a P.O. box, but the best thing you can do is subscribe to this channel. Many people who watch aren't actually subscribed. Just look below the video and there's a red subscribe button. Give it a little click or a tap and you'll be more likely to get my videos every day at 4 p.m. when I put them up. Don't forget to hit the like button, the notification bell. And if you really want to help share this video so more people can learn about what's going on, if you think I do a good job. And let's read this first story from Fox News. And then we'll start digging into the weird. I'll I'll just put it this way. I don't think they're actually campaigning. I think they're planning on losing. And I'm going to show you why. Fox reports tensions linger between Biden and Obama camps throughout 2020 primary campaign report. Don't underestimate Joe's ability to F things up. One Democrat who spoke to the former president recalled him saying, they say, despite the best friend bond Joe Biden touts with former President Obama, tensions have lingered between the two statesmen over their vastly different governing styles, according to a political report. To start, a number of anonymously sourced quotes from Obama leaked out throughout the throughout the 2020 Biden campaign, where the former president allegedly expressed doubts about his former running mate's fitness for often for office. Don't underestimate Joe's ability to F things up. One Democrat who spoke to the former president recalled him saying when lamenting his own diminishing relationship with the current Democratic electorate, particularly in Iowa, 
Obama reportedly told one 2020 candidate, and you know who really doesn't have it? Joe Biden. I think that's a very, very important statement that people need to hear. Do you like Barack Obama? Many people do. They found him to be, they found him to be charismatic, the champion of the people. I certainly don't agree with those things. But if you liked Barack Obama, he straight up said, Joe Biden doesn't have it. I mean, I guess right now what's really happening is the whole game is to vote against Trump. So that's all they want the focus to be. And that's probably why Joe Biden and Kamala Harris aren't taking press questions and are basically hiding in the basement. Kamala Harris, like I mentioned, went on Colbert and it was a disaster. Joe Biden goes on the air. It is a disaster. I think Barack Obama is right. He doesn't have it. Some Biden aides pointed out that when Obama's endorsement of Biden in 2020 finally did arrive, it didn't have nearly the energy of his endorsement of Hillary Clinton in 2016. Quote, I don't think there's ever been someone so qualified to hold this office, Obama said of Clinton in 2016 in an endorsement video. I believe Joe has all the all of the qualities we need in a president right now, and I know he will surround himself with good people, Obama said in Biden's endorsement video. I found that last line to be particularly interesting. He will surround himself with good people. It's similar to what we've been hearing over and over again. Take a look at this tweet from CNN. It says, Joe Biden made the pick that maximized his chances of continuing to make the race a straight referendum on Trump, while also selecting someone whose resume suggests being ready to step in if and when Biden decides to step aside. When has it ever been the goal of the American people to elect a president who might step aside? No, we elect a president to lead, not to be like, maybe I'll give it to my VP. But this narrative has been, well, it's been perpetuated quite a bit. But we even hear something similar like this from Barack Obama. He's got all the qualities we need, and I know he'll surround himself with good people. Well, I guess so. I guess it's fine. Maybe we're reading too much into it. But the way I kind of see it is, look, it's like grains of sand making a heap. How many statements do we have to hear about Joe Biden having people around him for if and when he steps aside or to lead this nation before we realize if the pres- if the former president is saying he doesn't have it and that other people are going to be around him, it's not a particularly good endorsement of the man. They go on to say, and while some senior Democrats credited Biden's ties to Obama for his strong relationship with black voters, Biden has emphasized that he earned their votes all on his own. He told aides after a South Carolina primary win, Obama hadn't lifted a finger to help him. Going back to 2016, when Obama glossed over Biden for Clinton, when he expressed interest in a presidential run, Obama aides tried to frame the president's snub as an act of compassion. Biden, grieving the loss of his son, Beau, in 2015, would not be mentally equipped to handle a campaign. But numerous administration veterans, including loyalists to both Obama and Biden, remember it differently. Obama had begun embracing Clinton as a possible successor years before Biden lost his son while the vice president was laying the groundwork for his own campaign. The Politico report read Obama had been subtly weighing in against Biden, uh, against Biden himself recalled in Promise Me Dad, his 2017 book. I also believe he had concluded that Hillary Clinton was almost certain to be the nominee, which was good by him. But many credit their differences in leadership style for any perceived tension. Biden loyalists and some Republicans found the formal scholarly statesman Obama had a hard time connecting with those in Congress. Quote, negotiating with President Obama was all about the fact that he felt that he knew the world better than you, said Eric Cantor, the Republican House Majority Leader from 2011 to 2014. And he felt that he had thought about it so much that he had figured it all out. And no matter what conclusion you had come to with the same set of facts, his way was right. Biden, he said, understood that you're going to have to agree to disagree about some things. A former Republican leadership described Obama's style as mansplaining, basically. Meanwhile, Obama's camp reportedly rolled their eyes at the plain spoken gaff prone Biden. You could certainly see technocratic eye rolling at times, said Jen Psaki, the former White House communications director. White House aides reportedly mocked Biden's frequent slip ups and lack of discipline next to almost clerical Obama. They would sneer at how Biden, like an elderly uncle at Thanksgiving, would launch into anecdotes everyone in the room had heard before. Joe Biden being roasted by the former president. There is no leadership. There is no Democratic Party. I know I'm being a bit, you know, it's it's an exaggeration. But the point I'm trying to make is the Democratic Party is split beyond all recognition. 
Joe Biden was the best they could muster up and Kamala Harris was the best VP they could get. And that will not unify anybody in the party. The only thing Democrats have right now, one thing, Donald Trump. I've heard this meme several times and I find it hilarious. Ask a Democrat, tell me why you're supporting Biden without saying the words Donald Trump. And many people cannot do it. Of course, there are some reasons to. Many people point to the fact that Kamala Harris is the most progressive VP candidate ever and that Joe Biden is malleable and will give in to the demands of the far left. But I think choosing Kamala Harris has soured any chances with getting the far left on board because they call her Cop Mala, a a despotic authoritarian who locked people up past their sentences and a whole bunch of other things that have been reported. But let's take a look at the complete and utter unhinged tactics of what is turning out to be one of the weirdest political campaigns in history. The damnedest thing I've ever seen. Chris Wallace on Biden campaign not putting any surrogates on Sunday shows before convention. Something is wrong with the Democratic Party. I'm sorry. You cannot convince me to vote for you simply by saying, look at him. I've looked at Trump. I've seen what he said. What have you got for me? Nothing. Donald Trump has offered up law and order. He's offered to bolster the economy, to secure our borders, and to do right by America. He's also offered up some things that people are critical of, and that's fine, but he's really made offers. I hear what he's saying. The Democrats are offering nothing, and I mean it, quite literally nothing. Look at this. Chris Wallace, host of Fox News Sunday and author of Countdown 1945, uh, spoke with the Fox News Radio's Guy Benson about the upcoming DNC convention. Wallace spoke to why the Biden campaign isn't putting any campaign surrogates on any of the Sunday shows this weekend before the DNC convention, saying, so I've been doing Sunday shows with conventions. I started on Meet the Press in 1988. I've been doing it on and off for what? What is that? 32 years. And it always happens that the Sunday before the convention, the campaign puts out top officials to preview the convention and to say, this is what we're going to try to get accomplished. So, you know, we put counting all we put counting all week on you know, having a top official from the Biden campaign, the campaign manager, the top pollster, the chief strategist to talk about what they're going to talk about during this next week. They are not putting anybody out. And at first I thought, well, maybe it's because it's Fox News and they're boycotting us. No, they're not putting anybody out on any of the Sunday show's point. I don't understand what's going on here. This is the damnedest thing I've ever seen that you would uh, that you would know you're basically giving a campaign. And as I say, it's a traditional thing. We're going to do it for the Republicans a week from Sunday. What are you trying to accomplish this week? And they, the Biden campaign and, and that the Biden campaign isn't putting anybody out. And this is just a piece with the vice president not doing really any serious interviews, not answering any questions since the rollout. I don't know. Uh, I don't you know, you can try. You can try and I can understand and has worked pretty well, and he continues to lead with what I'll call the basement strategy. I don't think you can hide from now until election day. I just don't think it's possible. I agree. It's not possible. But think about how scary this is. We don't know what Joe Biden and Kamala Harris want to do. I mean, what if their policies are to like, you know, start a war or something? They haven't even come out and talked about it. Hillary Clinton came out and debated with Trump about the merits of war and conflict in the Middle East and Syria and the problems with Russia, Joe Biden's hiding. You expect me to blindly vote for Joe Biden just because I don't like Trump? Never going to happen. The best you'd get out of me is that I wouldn't vote. But why would I lend my support to, to Joe Biden? No, I see what Donald Trump is doing. I'll tell you this right now. We've got problems. Donald Trump has offered solutions. What do you expect of me? I have no choice in the matter because you won't say anything. You want to hide in your basement? Fine, go do it. But, you know, I got to be honest, I wouldn't want to support someone from the Obama administration anyway, let alone Kamala Harris. Well, Bill Maher has actually pointed out he's concerned that Joe Biden is not comfortably ahead. He's not. I think the media is covering up for them. Check this out. Biden staffers rush the press out of the room before Joe Biden can answer any questions. And in this video, there's Kamala Harris and Biden. And sure enough, the staffers say, everybody go, everybody leave. You know why? Every single time. I mean, at this point, either of them do press. It's miserable. It's unhinged. It's broken. It's really weird. They criticize Trump. I tell you what, man, someone recently asked Trump at a press briefing about this 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 op ed from Newsweek that Kamala Harris is not a real citizen. 
And Trump's response was, I just heard about it today. I don't really know anything about it. I hear the guy is a really smart guy. And that was it. And the media runs the narrative. Trump pushes racist birther conspiracy. No, he didn't. He said he didn't know anything about it. Didn't know if it was true. Just heard about it. That's about it. The media does everything in their power to make sure that Joe Biden's campaign works. Why is that? Why is media? Now, Fox News, obviously not. Chris Wallace is confused. They're not sending anybody out. Where's all the other outlets to come out and say, Joe Biden, what are you doing? Nah, they complete his sentences for him. Joe Biden will stutter and stammer. And instead of quoting all the ums and ahs and broken words, they give you the complete sentence. I guess in their minds, it's easier to just give you the, the, the idea that Biden was trying to convey. But I think it's unfair. If Biden says, you know, from blah, 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 I think you got to write down the gibberish in the quote and say, you decide what he said. But no, they, they so listen, if Joe Biden says something and the reporter interprets what they think he was trying to say, we don't know what Joe Biden actually said and they could be getting it wrong. Well, I'll tell you what, man, it brings me now to the weird, fractured conspiracy world of the left and the Democrats. It seems to make no sense. Take a look at this. Joe Biden said voting by mail is safe and secure. And don't take my word for it. Take it from the president who just requested his mail in ballot for the Florida primary on Tuesday. You mean the absentee ballot? Mail in universal mail in voting is when they send out ballots to everyone. Absentee ballots are when you request one. But that brings me now to the far left conspiracies that just persist in media. And for some reason, they don't debunk. This person said, if these picks are real, are we watching mail mailboxes being picked up off the street in Oregon and New York? Are we watching voter suppression in broad daylight right in front of our eyes? In my life, I've never seen trucks hauling mailboxes away. Plus, it's happening in many places before the election. This is what they're saying. You've got Joe Biden saying it's safe and secure and people responding to him saying, no, it's not. They're stealing mailboxes. They're writing stories like this. USPS confirms removal of public mailboxes from Oregon cities. Yes, they did confirm it. But did uh, any of these outlets like Democracy Now! care to finish the sentence as to why they were being removed? I love this. They're being removed because they're being replaced. This to me is actually incredible. Take a look at this story. Photo about removing mailboxes goes viral, but USPS says it's replacing old ones. Was that it? And this is KATU. Look at this. Portland, Oregon. Is someone taking mailbox from around Portland? Now, the other day I said my understanding was they were removing mailboxes because they were mostly empty and the mail carriers had to go around and do massive rounds to mailboxes that had nothing in them. And by centralizing mailboxes, it was lowering the cost of operating for the post office, something good. I did read that in a news source, but as it turns out, they're saying they're just replacing them. Take a look at this. Is someone taking mailboxes from around Portland? A social media post appearing to show someone putting USPS boxes onto a truck gained traction online. So KATU dug into it and found the post office is the one removing the boxes to replace them because they're old. I, sw I swear, what is happening this is you've got you've got these left wing publications. They are putting out these narratives. Jamie Lee Curtis, high profile leftists. They say a spokesperson said they've taken down four mailboxes in Portland and more than two dozen in Eugene. They plan to remove more mailbox mailboxes from around Portland in the coming weeks. They're replacing them because they're old. Is that it? So actual local journalists did some digging and found out that's all that's happening. I'm telling you, man, it is completely unhinged. But I'll tell you what is freaky to me. Why would Joe Biden be telling everybody that mail-in voting is safe? Everyone go do it at a time when people are freaking out about mailboxes. You'd think he'd bring up, hey, people are concerned about what's going on with the USPS. It's not having proper funding due to, the, you know, due to COVID economics. People aren't sending mail anymore. So they're facing a massive budget shortfall. No, he says, ignore it. Well, I'll tell you what's interesting. This tweet from Jonathan Lay. The PA Department of State in its filing today says mail ballots should be counted if they are received by Friday after Election Day and are postmarked by Election Day, have no postmark or have illegible postmarks, only reject them if they are postmarked after Election Day. What? So wait, wait, wait. You mean to tell me if you want to vote and it's past Election Day, you need only physically bring it and drop it off in the mailbox, the polling station. Don't let it go through the, through, the, through the post office or whatever. Is that what they're saying? I don't think you can do that. I think that's, that's got to be illegal or something, right? They're going to be counting mail-in ballots that have no postmark that arrived after election day. Okay. 
What have we heard all, from all of these leftists with all these unhinged conspiracies that Donald Trump would likely win on election day? And then over the coming weeks, they would find more votes from the Democrats proving Joe Biden won and Trump would cry fraud. I mean, it sounds like they're making fraud really easy. And why is it that Fauci says there is no reason Americans can't vote in person in November? Infectious disease expert says it'll be safe to cast ballots in person if voters follow social distancing guidelines. So what's the problem? I don't know. All I know is Joe Biden is hiding in his basement. Kamala Harris has no idea what she's talking about. She's actually relatively far left. I know the far left doesn't think so, but compared to regular Americans, she is. Biden can't speak straight. They're both hiding. Obama himself is dragging Joe Biden. I'm sorry, man. We are looking at one of the weirdest campaigns I have ever seen in my life. And I don't, I don't know how to explain it. I mean, with, 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 with Romney, with Kerry, with Bush, I've been through several elections. I mean, I was a kid during Clinton and stuff, so I didn't really pay attention to all that stuff. But as I was growing up, I started watching. I remember watching, you know, uh, Bush and Gore when I was real young, just like I had no idea what it really meant. But everything went off, you know, not perfectly. But even with Gore and Bush, it wasn't this crazy. They both were campaigning. Unless there's something I miss because I'm not old enough to remember, this is the this weirdest election I've ever witnessed. Maybe there are other weird ones. I think it's entirely possible. We may be looking at a, a, a massive Donald Trump landslide. I do not believe the polls. Bill Maher says he doesn't think Biden is comfortably ahead. What he means by that is, you know, at some, some points in 2016, Hillary Clinton was ahead of, of, uh, of Trump from where Biden is, like even better than Biden, and Trump still won. So perhaps I think the polls are all broken and wrong. I don't think you can have everything I'm showing you over the past weeks and, and days. And now this story with even Obama saying Biden's basically unfit and think that people are going to rush out to vote for the guy. Maybe people hate Donald Trump that much. I don't know if I believe it, especially after the mass riots. Take a look at this. Former Obama speechwriter Favreau. Hilarious. Some media outlets calling Harris a moderate. He says, it was hilarious to me that she's being called in, in, in all this coverage a moderate. Like Joe Biden has found a fellow moderate or centrist. She supports something extremely close to Medicare for all, which Bernie Sanders acknowledged in his statement supporting her. She's for the Green New Deal. She has one of the most liberal records in the U.S. Senate. Well, there you go. Quote, if you want to call Kamala Harris's record in the Senate and her policies that she's supporting now centrist or moderate, great. If that's where the Overton window has moved, then congratulations to all the progressive activists because you have effing moved the S out of that window that's supporting the Green New Deal and basically Medicare for all is now moderate and centrist. Fantastic. I'll take it. But it's not true. It's absolutely not true. The Democrats are off the rails as far as I'm concerned. And let me show you this. I was I was surprised to see it. I said, wow, Colbert obliterated Kamala Harris. Her answer is complete garbage. Is she basically admitting she doesn't actually believe what she said in debates? Like it's normal to lie on stage to win support? This is weird to me. I'm sorry. Maybe it's just me. I see Trump come out and Trump just talks. When Trump talks, you basically can predict what he's going to say because you know how he feels and he says what he really believes. I don't know what Kamala Harris believes. Colbert brings up that he she that Kamala Harris basically said Joe Biden was racist. Now, now, literally, she said, I don't think you're a racist, Joe, but you did these things. I think it's a funny way to frame things like I don't think you're racist, Joe. But yeah, she mentioned a lot of policies from Joe Biden. When Colbert asks her, she just starts laughing. And then she goes, it was a debate. It was a debate. And just laughs incessantly. I thought to myself, this is nuts. What do you mean it was a debate? What does that mean? You, did you not believe the things you were saying? You were just trying to knock him down a peg or two to win public support. People are supporting you because of what they think you, you're talking about. But no, she had no real answer. And I was surprised to see that Colbert himself got her. Maybe he didn't think it was going to go this poorly, but boy, did it ever. And I'll tell you what this interview reminded me of. Hillary Clinton, she loved to ignore answers and just start laughing. And it's off-putting. Don't like, could you imagine? I've not seen uh, other candidates. Uh, do, look, Joe Biden gets mad. He gets asked about his dementia test. He goes, come on, man. Look, come on. Donald Trump just goes, what? Excuse me? Who? But Kamala, but Hillary, they just start laughing. Who told them this is what you do? Who told them Americans like it when instead of answering questions, you just start laughing? 
I don't know. It's the weirdest thing I've ever seen because it's nothing to do with 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 gender. This is like a learned behavior. There are certainly many female politicians who don't behave the way that Hillary and Kamala did. I find the whole thing absolutely unhinged, fractured, and downright confusing. But hey, I'll give it to Obama. Not that I'm a big fan of the guy, but hey, if he says Biden is unfit, Barack, I'll take your word for it. Great. I'll leave it there. Next segment's coming up at youtube.com slash timcastnews starting at 6 p.m. Thanks for hanging out, and I will see you all then.